All right, hey everyone, <clears throat> welcome. Another episode of Trading Bitcoin with your host, Tone Face. Damn it, I forgot to fill the cup. I literally have like two sips left. So I did this video will have right, to be short, hey, or uh, I'm gonna have to go and get another cup of tea. Let's go to the charts. Uh, no announcements, a new month has begun. The year is halfway over. It's crazy. We're now in June. Time just flies. All right. So here we go. The markets are open. Uh, we are looking at the monthly chart. As you can see, uh, this month is not that impressive, right? We are starting off another red month. I know that this month is only like a few hours in <laughs> out of 30 days. But you can see the moving averages have crossed over. This is a bad, rare sign. Uh, the last time this happened, uh, the price of Bitcoin crashed all the way down to the long-term monthly moving average. Uh, the big capitulation was yet to come. Uh, the time before when the moving averages crossed, it had looked like, you know, we broke this triangle, we rallied back up, and then we started off. So if anything, uh, the current month does resemble this month of December 2014. Okay. Because the prior month, it appeared to be a rally and the bear market has ended. You can see something very, very similar uh, right now, where last month, we had a nice rally. The candle is still red, but the rally was nice. But the moving averages did cross over. And this is what is very concerning me right now. And clearly, I'm not the only one that's concerned uh, because I can see what's happening um, out there in the, in the general market. People are very reluctant to spend any money on pretty much anything. Uh, people are very concerned. Uh, this is, this really is a recession. So I, I know that the government has their metrics. Oh, a recession is after uh, the government statistics show that there have been six months of lower activity. Uh, who cares? I mean, that is a very flawed metric. Uh, you know it's a recession when nobody wants to spend any money. Uh, everyone wastes all the last minute uh, to commit to anything. Uh, you, you, you can see it. Uh, almost every person I talk to, every business that I deal with, uh, they're starting to struggle right now. People are very scared of inflation. Uh, people are very scared of what's going to happen, how they're going to feed their families. And people are very reluctant uh, to spend money. Uh, now, then again, people should be more scared that the government is going to take away their money that they're saving. So they really should be putting that money into Bitcoin. Uh, but the charts are not yet reflecting that. Uh, if you just stand back and look at this monthly chart, it does not inspire a giant bullish conviction. Let's go to the weekly chart. Uh, the weekly chart is on an MRI warning buy. Let's go through some good news. The month, the weekly chart is in an area where the RSI should rally us to the upside. Uh, we are still in this downtrend, and that would need to be broken as opposed to bouncing off of it one more time and making one more potential low or perhaps some divergence. There was no divergence between the January low and the May low, so here to here. So maybe we will need you know, one more divergence uh, or hidden divergence, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, in order to reverse this. The MACD is more bearish than at any point in history. Uh, yes, there is some divergence within the histogram, uh, but the current week is not yet over. So if this, you know, red spike goes further red, uh, 
we'll see what happens there. You know, the RSI keeps going down. Uh, there is divergence in the histogram. But now we're really scraping the, like the bottom of the barrel to find bullish indication in the MACD. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying uh, that it's stretching a little bit there. The CMF is looking fairly good. I like this internal divergence of the CMF. It's a new month, so I want to go through a lot of these indicators. It looks like TradingView has corrected their data error from the weekly scale. Uh, we are now back on track where we should be. This is going to be a very critical week for the market. I know I have this uh, grossly embarrassing 10% bearish allocation, uh, but at the same time, I am not ready to commit to any bullish trades. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, and the question is, at which point do you cut this 10% bearish position uh, into cash? Remember, I don't panic. Uh, I never panic. Uh, if you start panicking as a trader, you really need to find a new profession or it means your account's about to collapse. You don't panic. You enter a trade. Uh, you do it with, in a way that's not going to ruin you even if something completely opposite happens. The complete opposite has happened. And now it's time to manage this trade as best you can. And I am staying completely patient. Uh, not even moving to cash yet. I might move to cash, uh, you know, closer to break even if we keep pulling back. Um, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to double down uh, a position that is losing because that was never the plan. Uh, there was no plan uh, to, uh, sometimes there is a plan. Sometimes there is a plan that says, hey, I'm going to enter a trade. And if it goes against me into this additional area, I will double down on that trade. If that is your initial plan, then it's perfectly okay to double down on a losing position. But if it's not the plan, if it was never the plan to double down on a losing position, uh, then that it's not something you should ever, ever do. That's tone based trading rule number one. Uh, the one rule you don't want to break is rule number one. So we bounced into this intermediate moving average that is dropping like a rock. And I want to see how this day ends. I'm going to give this more time. I'm giving this more time because we are pulling back. And the chart that I'm looking at the most right now is the correlation chart between the S&P and, and uh, Bitcoin. As you can see, the S&P did break the prior swing high, which is bullish. But I needed to establish a higher swing low because we've seen this movie before where it appears we have broken, like right there, on a closing basis, the prior like rebound high only to get crushed down. So we're pulling back. Today is Wednesday. Still have two more days before market closes. I want to see how the week ends because right now is a very critical point economically because the West is starting to realize that Ukraine is totally fucked, okay? Uh, the West is starting to realize that to the point where... Uh, it's going to get reflected in the markets real soon. Uh, as an example of complete mayhem, three days ago, there were articles that uh, America is not willing to send Ukraine any serious weapons uh, because they're afraid that uh, they will use those weapons to actually bomb cities in Russia. Uh, because the weapons have a really long range and they can do it. The report that I saw this morning is that the U.S. is starting to reconsider their position on these massive weapons. Uh, so this means that like, the United States government has absolutely no clue what they're actually doing. If they're flip-flopping on these you know, 
world changing positions on a daily basis, uh, it's going to get reflected in the market. It's going to get seriously reflected in the market. And just looking at like consumers, looking at the inflation numbers, uh, it's going to get very interesting. The stock market rallied a lot. And to be honest, Bitcoin kind of only rallied for one day. It, it really only rallied for one day. Like this candle here on May 29th, uh, over the weekend, basically. Uh, so I don't want to put too much emphasis on a single day in Bitcoin's rally that basically took place because of a monster stock market rally. The stock market rallied over a three-day span. The stock market rallied about 6%. And that's about what Bitcoin did in a single day right there. A little more, 8%. I I don't want to overstate uh, the fact that I don't think the stock market is ready for all-time highs. Let's go to the weekly chart. Stock market had a really good week. It broke this downward trend, the longest uh, weekly downward trend, and I think since like the Great Depression or something, people said. And we just had one good week. One good week. It wasn't even as good as the week we had on the 14th of March. And this was a way stronger week for multiple reasons. First of all, I'm not gonna promote my own indicator too much, but it bounced right off of MRI support. It bounced on an MRI buy. And all it could muster was one additional small week of upside, a reversal candle, and down we went for a historic downtrend. Why? Like, what is it in this candle that took place last week in the stock market is giddying people up that the stock market is ready to go to all-time highs? I just don't see it. I, I just don't see it. Um. I, uh, well, I can't pronounce your uh, username, uh, sir, (laughs) Uh, with a frog, Uh, but you say they agreed to send the weapons, but uh, had to promise to to not use on Russian soil. Good luck with that. Like, good luck with that. This is the problem, right? And I don't blame Ukrainians for wanting to use those weapons you know, and shoot over the border into like a Russian city. Like, I, I don't blame them. It's kind of like, um, and I gave this analogy before, uh, you are uh, in your apartment and like you're being robbed and then someone, you know, you, you, you're being robbed by someone with armor and you're getting weapons, right? And you can shoot the guy that's robbing you but they're not doing anything. And then they say, well, we'll give you a grenade, but you have to promise, like only jump on this guy with the grenade and not throw the grenade far because then the grenade could explode and hurt your neighbors. Like, okay. Um, It's (laughs) uh, No, I mean, it's... uh, there's no way that the United States can believe that promise that they're not going to use these weapons on Russian soil. And I wouldn't blame the Ukrainians for doing so. Well, like if if I was there uh, fighting against the Russians in Ukraine and I was losing, yeah, I'm going to, you, you, you take out as many as you can. So this is the, um, this is the big dilemma and the government flip-flopping left and right. So I'm looking at the stock market chart.
I'm looking at the stock market chart. And again, I just don't see why this is super, super bullish. We rallied perfectly into the prior support, which is historically or statistically the perfect area for resistance. And I'm going to let this play out. I'm just not buying into the bullish side of the market. We rallied right here. The, the Bitcoin basically had one really good day. We're about to go below 31,000. We just did. And it's dropping fairly quickly. Again, I would not double down on the short trade. I don't do that. Uh, it's a good way to lose all your money. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the info. Yeah. Secretary of State Blinken says Ukrainians have given U.S. assurances uh, that they will not use long range weapon systems against targets on Russian territory. Uh, I mean, if they can trust them, uh, I mean, I haven't been able to trust anything that has I haven't been able to trust any information that has come out of the Ukrainian authorities. Uh, but hey, if uh, Anthony Blinken uh, can trust them, then sure. Go for it. Uh, just remember that if they do use this weapon uh, against Russia on Russian soil, uh, it's literally World War III between Russia and NATO. But this is why I'm going to be in Latin America. Do they consider Crimea to be Russian territory? That is a great question. I don't know if the United States considers Crimea to be Russian territory, but guess who considers Crimea to be Russian territory? Russians. So we will see um, how this turns out. Well, there's a difference between World War III and World War III. I mean, for me, World War III is a nuke, uh, a tactical nuke. Uh, that's what I consider. I mean, like, like wars escalate, like World War I uh, to World War II was a serious escalation. We've had, what, hundreds of wars since World War II? And uh, to me, uh, it's only World War III if one side uses a tactical nuke against the city, like, uh, like straight up, um, you know what? Uh, we're actually going to deliberately kill women and children, like nuke. To me, that's, the big, that's World War III. Until then, it's, uh, uh, it's just proxy. So we're watching this drop right now, and uh, the, you can see the mood turning. Uh, I, I don't know what caused this optimism in Bitcoin and in the stock market. The most likely element that caused this rally 
to me, it's just that it's fallen for too long and a little too far. It's literally the definition of a relief rally. Can a relief rally turn itself into a bull market? It can. It's rare, but it certainly can. And um, I'm watching this drop on the stock market. It's pulling Bitcoin down with it. We are completely correlated. And we are straight up coming down to, are you bullish the US stock market? Yes or no? And I am not bullish the US stock market right now. I am just not, just based on what's going on in the, in the world. And that is why I've really debated the last 24 hours whether I should remove this silly short and go to cash. Uh, but instead, I'm actually going to leave this here another 24 hours. And I'm going to see what happens. Because if this candle loses more than half its value, this tone vase volume is going negative is going red. It has to lose a little more than half. There is a special math formula for this, but I'm going to I'm going to hold off on this. We got 8 hours to go. Uh let's see if this 4-day candle closes below 30,000, I'm going to start becoming confident in that short once again. And I really do want to start that political channel. I really want to start that political channel. Yeah, I'm, uh, like every morning I now watch um, what's going on. This is, uh, I mean, this is interesting. I mean, you have to understand what's going on here if you're going to prepare yourself financially. And... Yeah, there's a YouTube channel that just talks about this map and how it's like changing on a daily basis. So for Bitcoin on an hourly chart, the break of the MRI support line is going to be important. And after that, your next resistance is uh, the longer term moving average, which does, it's not that relevant, to be honest with you. So look what happens when you break one of these support lines. This was a resistance line. You broke it and went significantly higher. Significantly higher. 9%. That was a $3,000 move. And if we break it to the downside, it could be disastrous. Man, I already missed Brazil. Brazil was great. GBC premium is, of course, going to take a big hit if the market has not yet found the bottom. I remain very bullish on oil. No reason to stop there. Uh, Trump said the other day, uh, if you want to defeat Russia, uh, you know, get the oil price down to $30 a barrel. Trump's not wrong. Uh, the problem is you have uh, the globalists and the Green Party and the climate change people that, and I've been saying for a long time, I've been saying for over a year, these climate change people were on a mission to make oil unreasonably expensive so that people stop using oil. Uh, but instead, what they did was, you know, give all the power to Russia. So yeah, that's what happens. I mean, it's crazy to think that two years ago, a year and a half ago, yeah, two years ago, 
the price of oil was negative. Like you couldn't give it away, but there was a reason for that. The reason for that was the global shutdown. Nobody needed oil. If the government puts everyone in prison and doesn't let them even walk outside, there is no need for oil. So anyone that has oil will pay you to take it off, off their hands. Uh, this was a time of like, you know, 1800, like 1850, where you like, you know, start digging your ground to put in crops and you found a bunch of oil and you're like, shit, my land is ruined. Nobody wants the oil. You have to pay someone to clean it up, to take it off your hands. The government shut everything down. Uh, but then they went into overdrive on, uh, you know, well, the environment uh, did so great when no one could walk outside and no business is open. Uh, look, the pollution is reversing. Uh, if only we can eliminate all human beings, uh, the planet would be doing incredibly well. Uh, well, how can we maintain such a, you know, beautiful pollution-free planet? I know, let's make oil unreasonably expensive so no one can drive a car. And here we are, and it's only getting started. And I've been talking about this, you know, when oil was still down here somewhere. Gold I, I is bullish, but like the risk reward on gold is terrible. Uh, like you, it's uh, there's no risk and there's no reward. You, I'm, it's just such a boring asset. I am currently bearish the stock market until it proves to me that it can make a higher low. And as long as I am bearish the stock market, I will remain very skeptical on Bitcoin's bullishness. So that is it. I got nothing else to add. Uh, the Russian currency is strengthening this week once again. I'm hearing that Russia is trying to devalue their currency on purpose now. So we'll see how that goes. There are very strict you know, capital controls in Ukraine. But in reality, uh, once those controls end, Ukraine's currency is going into hyperinflation. The chart uh, validates this as well. I just came from Turkey, where it's an outright disaster, and I, I I don't really I don't really understand why their currency is doing so badly. Uh, whatever I don't know. Maybe they should do what Russia did, you know, or maybe they should do what was done to Russia, like. Uh, Maybe if Turkey gets removed from the Western financial system, their currency would actually strengthen. Like, I have no idea. Like, whatever the hell, whatever's going on in Turkey, it's a giant disaster. And I just came back from there. It's a total disaster. I'm surprised that the gas prices in San Francisco are, are that cheap at $6.49. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I really thought they would be over $9 a gallon by then. Uh, Turkey needs to find some gas and oil. Uh, they have it. They have they, they have access to the Leviathan uh, gas field, uh, one of the biggest gas fields in the world. It's under the Mediterranean, and uh, Turkey has a piece of that. Uh, now that the U.S. has destroyed all the other countries that also have a piece of it, except for uh, Israel. Uh, so Turkey gets a cut on that. I mean, Bitcoin 100K will happen eventually. I just don't see it this year.
You can glance at our favorite stock, Tesla. Not Tesla, sorry, Twitter. Yeah, like I said, Elon ain't buying Twitter. Not going to happen. He wants to, but no one would let him. Uh, if I was Elon, I'd offer him like $35 a share. And then start selling my stock to drive the price down to $30 a share. Uh, because once Twitter breaks this $30 low, it's going to go significantly lower. If I was Elon, I'd offer 30 bucks a share and start selling my shares. How's Tilray doing? Yeah, I'm just not bullish the stock market overall right now. Uh, Serbia signed a three-year contract with Russia for gas and other EU countries are mad now. Well, too bad. I mean, Serbia has a priority. Serbia's priority is to the Serbian people, not to the people of the EU. Uh, this is what like, people don't understand. Um, Serbia and Hungary have a priority to their people, not the collective. Uh, this is the problem with the U.S. right now. See, the, uh, the priority of the Biden administration is to the collective. Uh, American people come last. It's the collective first. Well, sorry, collective is second. Um, your uh, friends and family are first, right? So uh, Biden's number one priority is, you know, corruption for his son. And his uh, second priority is the collective. The World Economic Forum, uh, European Union, uh, you know, collective. What's better for the collective? Uh, this is the, you know, the socialist mentality. This is why that's, this is what happens when you have a Democrat in office, the socialist mentality. And then what matters to the American people is last. Like they're, they're, they're irrelevant, right? The EU functions the same way. Well, like what is better for the collective? Uh, but then you have a country like Hungary, a country like Serbia, that's saying, no, 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 wait, we're gonna do what's more important for our people first. And then uh, we will consider what's better for the collective. It's the same thing they tell you on an airplane, right? On an airplane, they tell you, put on your own mask. Like if the oxygen masks come down, what do they say? Put your own mask on first and then put the mask on your child. That is literally what they say in the play. You know, you put your own mask on first. You can't help your child if you are not there, right? Um, it's the same concept. You have to look out for yourself first, then others, because you can't look out for others if you are gone. So, the Serbians are looking out for Serbians before there are no more Serbians. There's nothing wrong with helping other people. You just got to make sure you are in a position to help them. This is not a, you know, uh, uh, like, oh, Tone is saying don't, don't help others. No, no, but you can only help others if you are able to help yourself before you can help them. Like you can't run and push someone uh, away from a, like a moving car if you don't have legs. How do you make sure you have legs? Well, you look out for yourself first. You don't let someone else cut off your legs. Can't help other people if you can't help yourself. Um, I don't have much news for Mexico. I'll probably be going down there this summer. I'll give you more info on the 
community that's being built out there. All right, guys, I think it's been a long enough episode. Uh, join us at the Financial Summit. Totally forgot to promote this page. In the Dominican Republic. We are building out our Instagram, our Twitter accounts. Uh, so please follow us. All the links are below the YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter. Should probably add a LinkedIn down there. We have that as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, just reach out. It's an event for traders and money managers. Is there a way to get access to my private chat room? Um, so I got two chat rooms in, on Telegram. I barely contribute in those chat rooms. I let people talk amongst themselves. I just don't have the time. I have no idea how people have all this time. Uh, so the only way to get into my trading group is to have access to the MRI indicator. It's really the only way. Uh, the price of the indicator has been dropped to 500 bucks. It gets you into the trading group as well, where people talk amongst themselves. I also have an off-topic chat group where we talk politics. I think I talk in that one a little more. Uh, and people that are in this group, in the trading group, have access to enter the other one. So uh, that one has like maybe two, 300 people. And that's where we talk about everything except trading. So that's really the only way. If the MRI ever becomes free, that group, that trading group is gonna get locked down because I can't have infinite number of people there. So anyone can post in there too. We just try to keep discussions on trading. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. And I will see you all on the next video. Eventually I'll start a political channel. And if I start a political channel, I will. there will not be a single word about politics on this channel, which is why it's important for me to open the political channel because of how many subscribers I'm losing uh, from this channel from talking politics. But I'll talk about politics all day long on that channel. It will just be you know, talking about climate change or lack thereof, uh, the elections coming up, uh, COVID, wars, or everything else. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, look, I don't mind letting you into the off-topic chat, but since I can't message you, like, I don't know how I would do it, right? I'm not going to post the link to it publicly. So present, uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind getting you into that chat, but like, I don't know how I would do that, right? Like I, uh, and I don't want it, to, it's really hard to get a hold of me. And unfortunately, the YouTube chat doesn't let me go to your YouTube channel. Oh, no, it actually does. But YouTube doesn't have a chat feature, right? So it's like, so it's so, because it will be so difficult for you to get a hold of you. Um, so unless you can get a hold of one of my moderators and they can get you into that group, like I just, uh, like I, I can't have my day be about putting people into a group that I barely speak in. So it's just hard. Uh, if you can somehow find your way in there, present, I mean, you're welcome <laughs> to be in there. Uh, but I but I can't post the, the the link to that Telegram publicly. I just can't. All right. Talk to you all on the next one.